Hi. It's uh, not every day that we get somebody to speak at DevConf uh, trying to get us to do something that's not Debian. So, well, uh, I think Holger is uh, an ideal candidate for that. He's always been well, uh, disruptive among us. So please welcome Holger Levsen, who's showing Cubes OS. Hi. Is this on? Yes, it's on. So yeah, I will talk about cubes and my experiences with, with it in the last half year. I've considered it the first time one and a half years ago. It took me some time to switch. And then it was actually quite easy. So about me, I'm using Debian since 22 years this year. Um, so I, 1996, I don't remember whether I started then with bus and Rex because I was not using Linux fully. But since 1997, I'm exclusively using Linux. Um, on the first laptop, I had Bo, then I switched to Hum, Sling, and Fat, uh, Potato, I started contributing. Woody was my first DebConf. In Sarge, I applied as AM. And in Edge, I was finally DD. And everything, other release, up to Jesse, they were all running on my main computer. And I love Debian. And today I still run mostly Stretch, but this machine and my main machine is now running Cubes. Cubes um, is based on Fedora 23, so that's outdated and not supported since some time, but it's supported by Cubes. And in this talk I'll try to explain why. Um, so about you, who has heard about Cubes or has a faint idea what it is? Okay, that's good. Who uses Cubes OS? Yay. Who tried Cubes OS and didn't switch? Yay. Why? We need to talk. <laughs> and I know about one person who switched to Cubes during Deb Camp, which I found very nice. And he's happy with it. So, what is Cubes? Wikipedia is useful. Cubes OS is a security-focused desktop operating system that aims to provide security through isolation. And virtualization is performed by Zen. And within Zen, you can run any other operating systems. It's also a single user system. So that's, it's not in the design that other people log into the computer. It's just your computer. And it's free software. It's mostly GPL. There's some libgpl stuff by no, library, GPL, GPL. And so the code lives on GitHub, so under GitHub user Cubes OS. Very useful is this Cubes doc, which has all the documentation as a Git repository. I really recommend to check it out. The reading is better done on the web page. And it really covers all the use cases and special cases and YubiKey and whatnot. So this is really the recommended source of information. And Cubes OS is really old. So Joanna Woodkova designed that in 2011 or earlier. So that six, the following picture is six years old. And this is the way she describes doing stuff. So the red VMs are less trusted. The black ones are really trusted. And there are several internets on there because you can use several ways to connect to the internet. And each VM connects. Up, or up to each VM can connect independently to the network. And there's a really nice, this blog post from 2011 is really nice read how she does whatever things and then you can try to base your work on this or something else. So more about me, I don't really know Zen, I don't really know Fedora neither, and I don't have to because I'm really just using this to use to use Debian, to develop on Debian. And I'm only using Cube since six months. So when, what I will show is Cubes 3.2, while last week the 4C release, first release candidate was released. And it's a fairly unmodified Cube, so I upgraded the kernel to better support the hardware. I installed i3, and I created a Debian 9 template. Um, and I, that was it, and I upgraded some packages. 
And on my production system, I've not done much more. I installed two more packages, and I configured i3, which I actually also done on this machine now, because I really prefer i3 over XFCE. And all the graphical stuff I'll show you can also be done via command line tool, so you don't have to use the mouse. It's optional. So, Cubes Manager. I don't use this. There it is. So this is the Cubes, Cubes Manager. And you see there the VMs with the state, with the red-green circle, they are running. So the personal VM is running and this net, this USB and this firewall. And what the other things, the state with the arrow down, there's, there are upgrades available, which I could install. And there's the memory usage and the net VM. And this is one thing. So DOM0 doesn't have network. DOM0 is in Zen, the hypervisor, and here it also runs the graphical stuff. But that DOM0 doesn't have network. If I want to upgrade it, there's a special tool to upgrade it, which I don't, will not explain here. The others, there's a network VM, which has access to the network hardware, which is untrusted, because the hard network hardware is often easily exploitable. And then everything goes, uh, the, this firewall is connected to the, this network, so that the firewall VM is considered trusted. And all the other use this firewall to go to the network. Except that there's uh, the Sunix, which I will explain in a second, so you can have several different net VMs. Um, so much for this. Oh yeah, starting Firefox I've done, but I'll show this other thing here. So this is the application menu of XFCE in this case, and I can start Firefox here, I could start Firefox here, I could start Firefox there. Um, good. And this is, I explain, already explained a bit, this we have, can I make this smaller? Probably. Um, so we have the network, the firewall VM, which goes to the network, and which the application VMs are connected. And there's this this Hunix VM. Hunix is a Debian-based uh, distribution for Tor usage. So this um, this Hunix is essentially a Tor gateway. So if I, if I make the this Hunix the firewall VM of my application VM, all the traffic goes through Tor. Um, and I can have also several, um, the Hunix, several firewalls. Um, there's disk storage is the limit. And then I switch the firewall now to Debian 9, because I've left it at Fedora, and that's really not nice. So one thing I need to shut down this VM. Do I want? No, I don't want to shut this down. So let's remove the network for this personal VM. No more network. Of course, I cannot shut down the firewall if something is connected to it. And now I can change the firewall. And now I can shut it down. Yes, shut down. The Sunix is still connected. OK. Shut this down. I shut down the firewall. And now I switch the firewall to be Debian 9 instead. And now I started. And that was changing the operating system for my firewall. Pretty easy. Um, I could also switch the firewall to a completely, it doesn't have to be Linux as long as it runs Zen. So one thing. Mirage is a OCaml based firewall, which I don't remember one megabyte RAM requirements and a few more megabytes storage. So you can save resources there if you have other firewalls or if you just want to have more secure firewalls. And I've, it's the same thing, I switched my personal VM to Debian 9. For this, I will need to stop Firefox though, or everything. So this is 
I shut down this fire personal VM, yes. Switch this to Debian 9, or I could use also Fedora, let's switch to Fedora. And now I run Firefox in Fedora. Should be working. And I can also switch the network VM for this untrusted as a Unix gateway. And now everything I do on this VM goes via Tor. And if I have a second Unix VM, then it goes through a different Tor circuit, of course. So I could also make that for every app VM, I can use a dedicated network VM if I want to. Um, the next thing I want to show you involves actually switching to i3 because I don't really like XFCE. I used to awesome very long. So close this. Log out. If you have questions in between, just feel free to ask them. So what did that? I need, actually need to switch to i3 to use it. <laughs> you cannot see that now. I, uh, there's in the upper right is the, uh, the desktop environment switcher. So this is now cubes. Okay, and now I want to start. This is another way to start a VM. It was actually running. Now I start back Firefox. Do it in. I've done here is that I modified the status bar a bit to have a boring Spanish clock and the battery usage and these are the number of cubes so currently there's two application cubes running three system, system cubes and DOM zero and I have in total six um, application for system and five templates and I'm using currently a gigabyte of memory and this is the oh yes, and the other thing I made, I made a simple clock, ta-da, to show the time, is it? Thing. And this is really the only modification to standards cubes I really have. So with um, meta and enter, I open a shell in DOM zero, and with meta shift and enter, I can select on the bottom where I want to open the shell, uh, the terminal, and if it's not running, then it will start a new VM. And the same is done with XFCE as well, but I like keyboard shortcuts. Um, and the same with Meta Shift F, I can open Firefox somewhere. So we'll start the next one and start Firefox there. So I'll wait till it's there. There's Firefox. And there's no network. And the other modification I made for myself that I can turn on displays and turn them off. But I really, really like i3. Anyway, and then there's one problem you cannot, or one feature rather, you cannot copy um, stuff, copy and paste from one VM to the next one. So you need to put it with, into your copy pair buffer with Ctrl C or whatever there is. Then you need to use meta control C to copy it in the cubes buffer. 
then you need to use meta control v to copy it in the cube's output buffer for the next vm and then put it in the final one and this works nicely um, and it sh um, should pr not protect you but should it enable you from accident in practice i found that i actually m more often now do copy and paste accidents than before um, i'm not sure whether that's really the best thing so if i should I show it here. I will not show it. Um, yeah, the templating stuff. So, um, before I show this, let's go back to where am I here? So if I want to clone a VM, let's clone the whatever work VM. Um, no, it's not wrong. So I go to VM here, create new VM. So label is Montreal Airport. Airport is also nice. Then I can choose what I want. I want Debian 9. I want this firewall. And then I press OK and it will create a new VM and it's reasonable fast where the new VM is created. And now I can open a shell in Montreal Airport VM. Um, this is done because there's these template VMs, these black ones on the left are all templates, and each application VM, that's this column, are based on a template. So if an application, uh, application VM is started, they will use the templates file system with a copy on write addition file system layer so that modifications of the up VM are lost after reboot. So if your system gets compromised, it's gone, or you can install packages for testing and they will later be gone. The template VMs are configured, they don't have full internet access, they only have access to the up or yum repos, so they cannot access normal sites on the web. Um, and that's this part. And so you can also clone the SysUnix to make a SysUnix 2 or 3 or 4 if you want more Tor gateways. I will not show this actually. And you can easily increase the disk, increase the disk size. So by default, they all have 5 gigabyte disk space in home. So if I want the personal VM to have 20 gigabytes, I can do this here while running. It's two gigabyte by default, so I just change this. Okay, and now it's 20 gigabytes. Increasing is easy, decreasing is not supported, surprisingly. <laughs> um. Yeah, I've al already said this. One good thing is really, I don't save on template. Um, anymore because I basically I'm aiming for every up VM has its own template. There's sometimes I want some which are the same, but usually I have get more and more templates. In the beginning I got more and more up, up VMs and now I'm collecting templates. They are about five gigabytes per template and I have a terabyte disk, so fine. And one mistake I made initially that I tried to use my user account in the VMs. And that's not a good idea because Cubes is configured to use the user user for certain things I'm going to show. And my recommendation is stick with the user user. Don't change it. Yeah, and then I can also use Nautilus to copy files, though I really never do this. So let's see how this is done. I know. So I want the work VM and files. Now I can use right mouse click and say um, copy to other up VM or move to other up VM and this way I can copy files. I usually do it over the command line because I don't like graphical stuff, but it's possible. And now I'm stopping with the demo part. There's also USB isolation, so there was a, this USB as well, which has the um, USB controller attached, so DOM0 is not exposed to them. And so if you attach an, an USB stick, it will be attached to the USB VM, then you need to tell Cubes 
to reattach it to the VM, you want to use the USB stick, and before unplugging the USB stick, you need to detach that in cubes as well. And then you can have nice USB isolation for that. The same with PCI device isolation. You can, the NetVM is the only one which has access to the network devices. You can do this for any PCI device. I keep the network run, VM running with Fedora so that the modules in the VM and the, fir the firmware in the VM is the same as with the kernel. Um, maybe it will work, can test if it works with Debian and your VM. Sound is also working, it works via Pulse Audio and just working out of the box, so each VM has sound. Um, Though this is also a bit of a security issue and in general the plan is to split this DOM0 into DOM0 and a display VM and then also add a sound VM. Um, but this is not being done yet, that's hopefully the, in the next release after 4.0. And as you can see full screen applications including video are possible as well. So I used to do everything on the computer with cubes now. <coughs> Um, there's more features. There are also disposable VMs, which are um, created with a mouse click or with whatever. And they're based on one template in 3.2. In the new version, you can use several templates for it. So you can have the disposable Debian 8 and 9 and Fedora. Um, I've not used them this much yet because I Sometimes I really like to keep it, I rather create temporary VMs which I throw away every week or something. Um, but you can open links and files in disposable VMs. And another thing is if you, there's also an option to convert PDF into trustable VMs. That's done, the PDF is opened in a, in a disposable VM, then there's a screenshot taken of each PDF page and then saved again as a PDF of screenshots and copy it back to the original VM and then the disposable VM is destroyed. And you do it with a mouse click, so it's not any work. The same is there for images, because also images can have exploits code in them. And as I said, there's many command line tools. These are the tools which are available in the VMs. So it's converting image, copy to VM, MRU entry, I don't know. <coughs> Open DVM is the disposable VM. And so this also means there's a cubes up repository which the cubes Debian VMs use. And that would also be something which might be interesting to get in Debian proper one day. And DOM0 has a lot more commands. These are for VMs. And these are more for cubes manager and cubes database and stuff. Those are mostly, if not all, written in Python. And then backup is included in Cubes Manager, and it's good and bad, I would say. I use it. But at first, we suddenly have way more systems to backup. It's not one system anymore, but suddenly 20 and, or 40 or whatever. And maybe three quarters of them are worth backupping, or more or less, I don't know. And one issue, it's, it's image-based backups only, so it's the whole um, disk image which is backed up, um, which I don't like that much, but else you have 30 systems to backup. Um, what's really nice, the backup works really nicely, so I've, for one event recently I backed up the whole, my whole system, then deleted some VMs locally, set up another system with cubes, Back, restored DOM0 and some VMs there, and I had my system suddenly split into two computers. And that was really, really nice. And then after the event, I moved the VMs back to a single computer. That's really cool. And there are several custom improvements or custom script for other backup solutions um, if you don't like that one. And this, again, this backup restore from is either you can use it with a mouse from the cubes manager or from the command line, and then you can script it as you want. Yeah, and in generally that's a problem. Repair recovery might be harder. DOM0 has no network, 
and it's Fedora. So if you don't know Fedora and Grub broke or you switch from a Grub system to a UEFI system or whatever, then you will learn Fedora. Else you don't, because it just works. And memory. So this system has, well, I'll start with this one. Four gigabyte is definitely good for testing. I'm not sure whether you can test it with two gigabyte, but I would not recommend. Four is really good for testing. Eight gigabyte is good for some type of works. In my experience, if you don't use a USB VM and don't have too many tabs open, too many VMs, eight gigabyte is fine. Tawa, who started using it here, it has six gigabyte and he's happy he can work with it, he said. 12 gigabyte is definitely better than eight because of this, this VM, but the system, my system has now 16 gigabyte and I sometimes max it out. And then you cannot start new VMs, which is annoying. So yes, 32 is better, 64 gigabyte would be nice. What if you want to run Firefox? <laughs> you run Firefox, you need RAM, as much RAM you need. And five, you want RAM. You really want RAM. <laughs> terabyte RAM would be nice as well. <coughs> but uh, seriously, if, if you have four, give it a try. And eight should be fine. CPUs and SSD disk space. Or one or two CPUs are fine, more is better. They need to be um, support modern virtualization features, which all systems from 2012 or 13 or something should support, or not all, or all. i3, i5 is definitely fine. There's a hardware compatibi compatibility list on the Cube's web page which has models listed and what problems there are or not. Um, I found this laptop that's an X260 and it was, was crashing with Cube's 3.2 like <coughs> mad. And it really needs kernel 4.9, which is in the upcoming 4.0 cubes release. Or there's also packages for 3.2, so this is stable now. 6200 gigabyte SSD space is definitely fine for testing. I've also done it with 50 gigabytes. Um, for working, depends what you need. Each template VM is 5 gigabyte, and an apl application VM is Few, mega, few megabytes and what you put in there. So it really depends on how you use the computer. Missing features I found. You cannot hibernate with Zen. Which, hmm? Encrypt on suspend doesn't work yet, but there's work in progress for it. So that, that forgets the um, disk encryption passphrase on suspend, changes in the RAM in a, temp, in a RAM, RAM file system to have the screen saver dialog and once you enter the disk crash correctly it will then mount, remount the file system again. I really hope for this feature to be soon and I think it should also be in Debian. Um, somebody should do something. And there's no IPv6 support in cubes. So if you need IPv6 that's a bummer. Because all, all you need to do the networking yourself I've not really looked into it. I'm sure there's a ticket for it and a how-to, but out of the box it just does IPv4. So my conclusion, so preliminary conclusion, totally works for me. I'm using it since six months every day. I installed it three days before FOSDEM. And I had hardware problems for five months. Just a month ago I switched to the X230. And before that resume was completely unreliable but it worked nicely without resuming, and so I just didn't do that often. Um, so check your hardware. Um, I still don't like Fedora, but I don't have to interact with it, so I'm fine. Um, and partitioning one's digital life is really hard. Like this picture I've shown you from Joanna with all the VMs. I've now over, I think I've got 35 application VMs and I still need more and it's a tough question how to separate that. The nice thing is I can still do this later and not lose anything really. Um, yeah. And moving VMs from one cube system to another is really, really nice. It's super useful and it's super easy. 
So if you need to travel and don't want to take data with you. So my cubes to do use the password vault. That's a special VM which doesn't have network um, which, where you keep your private key into and then you do it to the other keys, uh, to the other VMs. Um, I've decided I wanted this nice partition digital life, but then I've just moved my, all my old computer into one application VM, started using cubes and moved stuff out of this VM. And so I'm now using the computer more secure than I used with Debian, but not as secure as I could with cubes. And this is this password vault thing. And I still not don't use my YubiKey. Um, the password half, so having half the password in the YubiKey and half in memory, that works nicely because it's just attached to the USB VM. But keeping GPG subkeys in the, in the YubiKey, then I will need to attach the YubiKey, assign it to the app VM, use it there. So I, I will use this switch together with using the Vault VM and then automate this. And I'd like to use Salt to manage the VMs. Um, Salt is the configuration management system used by Cubes internally to create all these different VMs and configure them. Um, so I want to build on that, but I still haven't gotten any documentation how Cubes uses it and how I had some questions which weren't answered, so I put this later on the to-do because I don't really configure the system much anyway. But if you know Salt and can give me a short intro, I would love that. Yeah, in general, I'm very happy with cubes without having changed much. So, more conclusions. I really, really like it. The separation is awesome. Um, I also like to be able to create new VMs so easily. And this Unix and this Unix and Unix itself operate is great. So there's this Unix is the store gateway, and there's also a Unix workstation which is Debian desktop with Tor browser installed. That's the main difference to Debian. There's some other Tor applications as well, but that's really nice. Um, suspend resume issues are annoying, but since with this with the newer kernel and the X230, they are gone. Sometimes there are some routing issues when the network is um, recreated, which is also because of the network hardware, so with different hardware, it might not be the issue. And so choose your hardware wisely. And maybe I'm using, well, probably I'm using only one third or less of Cube's potential, but that really pays off already. Um, your mileage might vary. Try it for yourself. And changing one's own habit is really hard, but doing so is good. So that's the talk. Thanks to the Cubes people who provide this nice operating system. And thanks to the nice people offering help with it. And thank you, Debian people, to provide a good operating system to run on Cubes. a couple of questions. The first question is, it looks like it's an administrator for virtual machines and not an OS. So what would it take to run cubes on Debian instead of Fedora? Well, it's, cubes has some 20 or so own packages, but it also modifies Xen a bit. It builds on top of Xen. It has some tiny modification, I think, to Linux as well, but the most problem to create a Debian-based Cubes OS would be the send part. But on the other hand, I, don't, I, used to, I used to want to do that, but I don't think it's sensible anymore, because I think rather DOM0 should be a way smaller OS, so Alp, Alpine Linux or a leader-based Linux or system, but not the system like Debian or Fedora, which has too many libraries linked in. So that's, that, and that's, the Cubes people were also interested in Debian because Debian is closer to reproducible builds than Fedora, so they were interested, but now they also, they switched to this aim of a smaller distro for DOM0. Because what they have at the moment is the graphical interface is at the moment still running in DOM0, 
and that should be moved to a different VM as well, and then you really need nothing in DOM0. Okay, and then the other question. Uh, when you moved the firewall from Fedora to Debian, what, what was happening? Like, you mentioned salt, so maybe what was, well, you didn't explain what was happening. Can you explain? That, I think, I don't, the firewall rules, I don't really know how they are done there. It's probably a package there, but um, I, the operating system is switched, and that will be salt in that case, changing the Right, no, my question is how did the firewall know how to set up the firewall in Fedora and in Debian? I expect they are pretty different. I think it's IP tables in most cases. Okay. I think the question is how did it configure IP tables? Did it use salt to do it or was it something else? I don't know. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my question is there's a uh, different ways, uh, different gradual. Uh, uh, the separation can be made, made more or less uh, gradual. Say, uh, QC is much more secure than having everything in the same context. It would, of course, be more secure to have a laboratory of machines and devote each one to each one of your facets of life. But uh, wouldn't I, I mean? Um, uh, I, I know it's not not implemented, but I don't know if you looked into something that maybe would be more, cons uh, well, more, yeah, conservative, intelligent, resource-wise, that instead of virtual machines would use containers. I know that would uh, increase the like, uh, like likelihood of uh, being, escape, uh, being able to escape uh, the containment, but it would be much more friendly towards uh, smaller machines. Have you heard about something? The, the approach for cubes is not to uh, be friendly to resources, but rather yeah, yeah. to provide the most secure isolation. So that's why they choose Xen, because they're the hypervisor you can actually review and understand. What not. But the cubes architecture is made in a way that you can change this virtualization solution. So I, I, I don't think it will happen really soon, because there's not, mu not much interest in it but it should be possible. And I think this general approach of separating your computing reams on a computer more and not do everything under one single user in one operating system, just using two user accounts is better than using one. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, uh, only that it, it, it would be nice to, to be able to do it in a more friendly way. Just uh, something to add and a question. I, I don't know if I missed it, but one of the features of cubes, uh, and I, I don't know how well this comes out with i3, is when you're running the different VMs, there the border is colored uh, according to the, the the specific VM where it is. So like the one on the right is a blue, so that's the looks like the work VM, right? That's the work VM in this Yeah, case. and then if you're in, in one of these uh, template or the DOM zero VMs, it will be black. So you, you have this nice visual cue that's very subtle, but helpful for you to know, okay, I'm in this untrusted or I'm in this work or vault VM or whatever. Uh, it's really nice. I see it does work well in i3. So that's his personal VM there. Um, and just the, the, this small UI uh, thing really helps you when you have a cluttered screen. So you know that these two in the middle are personal. Where the, on the right, where the blue one is, that's the work one. I can't see very well from here. But uh, so the question I had was if you have uh, investigated any of the uh, how Secure Boot works with cubes in any way. Do you know how that uh, is integrated? Secure boot, help me as again, is... Like if you boot on Xen, then... Yeah, I mean, uh, does, does Cubes or Fedora have some way of doing secure boot and so that you can... Uh, they have a certificate for signing the... The, the way the I do kernel. that would rather be to use heads. Heads is a core boot based Linux system which runs from the ROM, uses the TPM to assert the non-changeness of your hardware and software. So it does, it's a different implementation of secure boot, essentially. Um, needs core boot. But that would be my approach. And I, th 
not heard anything about cubes using secure boot. At, uh, yeah, secure boot. They also recommend core boot. They don't recommend heads yet, but. Hi, my, my question is just simple. Who is the people behind this distribution? And why are we supposed to trust that people? Because one of the most important points to choose Debian is related with trust in, in my case. So uh, every time someone comes with another uh, technology, I'm always open to try. But I always have this question about. Uh, Cubes is made by a group of people now, originally funded by Invisible Labs, which is a company from Iwana Rutkova in Warsaw, Warsawa in Poland. Um, I know Joanna from giving talks at the CCC Congress since 10 years or something. She made several security related talks there. Um, they seem to be reasonable, paranoid people. Um, but yeah, it's free software. You can, can rebuild cubes and so far the image is not reproducible, but hopefully it will be soon. Um, but yeah, whom do you trust? How flexible is the firewall configuration? Have you got any whiz bangs, I mean, NAT or masquerading or things like that? It's, it's doing NAT. So that and you can cannot one VM cannot talk to the other. I've not really looked into the firewall at all. I just use the one which is there by default. I'm happy with the nothing stuff, so I cannot access the VMs from the outside. I can access the outside world, and that was enough for me. But I I don't know. But the case that, that, that some people made this Mirage-based firewall, which is a complete different system. I think it's quite very flexible. Um, I'm curious if if there's any uh, movement by the Cubes people to um, suspending a, a VM so that you could like sort of suspend it, move it to a different Cubes uh, running and resume it there, or if it's already possible even. I think this is supported by Xen, so it's, it's not uh, impossible per se. But I don't think it's working with cubes that way yet. You know if there if it's a goal up there? I don't know. Cubes is mostly made for, for running on personal computers. So it's not not so much the use case that you move it away from one machine or server to another. There's also people some people want to use it as a server. Um, there's many things to do. It's up to me to say thank you, Holger, and uh, please thank, thank, thank him together with me.